This video is designed to give you an overview of the lab as well as designed to give you some detailed procedures for doing part one of the lab. Now in terms of overview, the overall goal is to measure the molar mass of your unknown vapor. It starts out as a liquid, you're going to turn it into a gas, and then measure its mass. So, uh, the lab itself is divided into three parts. Part one is to measure the mass of the unknown vapor. Part two is designed to measure the density of tap water. And part three is to use that tap, same tap water to measure the volume of your container that you use to uh, vaporize the liquid, namely a 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. Just a general note, uh, for reasons that I'm not going to get into, you must do part one first. Do not do part three and then uh, while you're waiting for the water to heat up. It's a very common mistake. Uh, you can do parts two and three more or less simultaneously, but do part one first. By now you should have a water bath going. We went through that on the the previous video. Now we need to make the Dumas tube. We need to make it from four components, the 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, your two rubber bands, and a piece of aluminum foil. Basically all you do is you center the piece of aluminum foil over the end of the Dumas tube and then you collapse the edges of the foil down to make a cap. Just kind of crush all that material down so that it forms a pretty nice form-fitting cap. Now, the uh, again, the goal of this section is to measure the mass of the vapor once it's inside this tube, right, inside of this container. Now, the container itself is only about 150 milliliters in volume and gases in general are very low density. So, this section of the lab is going to be very sensitive to errors which cause changes in mass. mass. And one of those very common errors is that water will get trapped between the edge of the aluminum foil cap and the glass. Water on the outside of the glass is easy to get rid of. We can just wipe it off with a towel or something. But once it's underneath the aluminum foil, it's a little harder to get at. One way to reduce this error is to make sure your aluminum foil doesn't extend too far down the neck of the Erlenmeyer flask. Generally speaking, you want about enough material to cover the width of your index finger. Even if it's a little less, like uh, right here, I don't quite have enough material, that's okay, don't worry. The corners of the aluminum foil, what used to be the corners when the aluminum foil was a square, are going to extend down much farther than you need them to. And that's going to invite little bits of water to get trapped in there, and that's going to cause errors. So a little trick is to just take the corners of the aluminum foil and fold them up a little bit so that it's at the same level as the rest of your aluminum foil. You don't have to be real super accurate about this, just make sure the corners don't hang down too much. Okay, There we go. So we've got a cap where the corners don't hang down nearly as much as they used to. It more or less fits the form of the, of the flask. And now we need to seal that edge with the rubber bands. So take the rubber bands, get them nice and tight, wrap them around the aluminum foil about three or four times and then take a second rubber band and do the same thing. You might be asking yourself, I just did this, why do I have to do it again? Well, the reason you use two rubber bands is because in the past, I don't know how many years, maybe 20 years or so, the quality of rubber bands has really decreased quite a bit and they snap pretty easily nowadays. So, the combination of high tension from wrapping it around and the heat from the water bath is probably going to make, well not probably, but there's a decent chance that one of your rubber bands is going to break. 
So you use two rubber bands. If one of them breaks, it's all good. You got a second one. So that's your Dumas tube. Erlenmeyer flask, aluminum foil cap, rubber bands around the edge. Absolutely essential thing to do at this point before you go any further. Weigh your Dumas tube on an electronic balance. You want to use an electronic balance for this stage because like I said you're looking at very low changes in mass so you want the added accuracy of an electronic balance. You have to get a mass measurement before you put any unknown in there. Otherwise the rest of the lab doesn't matter. You will never be able to analyze your data unless you have this first mass measurement where all you've got is your Dumas tube full of air. No vapor. No unknown. Once you've recorded that, it's time to get some unknown in here. Your unknown starts out in this little uh, translucent plastic vial. You get it from here into here using your needle and syringe. The needle and syringe is actually three separate parts. There is the syringe itself, and then screwing onto that is the needle and its cap. The needle is sharp, so keep it capped as long as possible. There is only one point where you actually need the sharpness of the needle. Other than that, the needle should stay capped at all times. First thing to do is to get some of your liquid unknown into the syringe. So you unscrew the needle and the cap, keep them both together, take those off of the syringe. Unscrew the cap to your unknown, put the syringe in there so that it's immersed in the liquid, and load up about one and a half to two milliliters of liquid. This is a three milliliter syringe, but you really don't need all three milliliters. Two milliliters is more than enough. Pull it up slowly, otherwise the low pressure that you create by pulling it up quickly is going to cause some of your unknown to evaporate. Now you need to screw the syringe, uh, screw the needle back onto the syringe and puncture the cap. So now you actually need the sharpness of the needle. Take the cap off, punch the top of the needle through the cap of the Erlenmeyer flask, your, what's now your Dumas tube, and empty out the syringe. Pull the needle out, cap it back up. You're done with the needle and the syringe. Okay, so now you got your Dumas tube. It's got some of your liquid unknown, but this is a gas law lab, so we obviously need to turn our liquid into a gas. The way you do that is heat. By now, your water bath should be boiling. There should be a continuous stream of water bubbles coming up through it. So the glass itself and the water inside of it and the steam coming out of it are all going to be very hot. Don't get your hand too close to it so that you don't have to get your hand too close to it. From now on, we're going to hold the Dumas tube with the long forceps. Before you put this into here, actually you're supposed to do it like this, like this into here, you need to take a temperature measurement. So read your thermometer, make sure that the end of the thermometer is not directly in contact with the bottom of the flask, but you want it in the water, not the uh, not the uh, beaker. Take a temperature measurement and then put your Dumas tube into the beaker. You want to cover as much of the beak, uh, of the Dumas tube with water without getting risking uh, any of the water getting underneath the aluminum foil cap. You also want the Dumas tube to heat up completely. You want it to reach the same temperature as the boiling water. So that means you gotta wait. At least five minutes, I'd wait seven minutes just to be sure. Maybe even ten. 
if you have that much time. So you wait 10 minutes, you should actually, if you look really carefully, you can actually see a stream of the gas vapor coming out of the pinhole that you just created on the top of the Dumas tube. Seven minutes pass. You take the Dumas tube out of the hot water bath and then put it onto a, a towel. Dry off the glass walls because you want to get all those water droplets off Otherwise, they'll screw up your mass measurements. Then you let it sit. You have to wait for it to cool back down because you need to be able to compare your mass measurement before you, put, you heated it up to your mass measurement after you heated it up. Now remember, your mass measurement before you heated it up had the glass from the Dumas tube, the rubber bands and the aluminum foil, and here's the key thing, the air inside the Dumas tube. So now we have to let the, the unknown vapor condense back down into a liquid so that we can get air back into the Dumas tube and have a comparable before and after measurement. So the before measurement was Dumas tube plus air. Your after measurement is going to be Dumas tube plus air plus condensed vapor. Subtract the two and you get the mass of your condensed vapor. Let it cool down to about room temperature or until, uh, well, till about room temperature. And then take another reading on the same electronic balance. You want to use the same electronic balance so that any systematic error in your balance cancels out. If you have time, in other words, if you're done with this cycle about 20 minutes before the end of the period, at least, probably 25 is a little safer. Do this whole process again so that you get two measurements of the mass of the vapor. If not, you can probably do you can do the entire analysis with just one. All right, that's the end of the procedure for part one of the lab. Part two of the lab is to measure the density of the uh, of tap water, and part three of the lab is to measure the mass of water, the maximum mass of water you can hold in this container. Overall, the goal of part one, in other words, the part you just finished, is to get the mass of the vapor, the temperature of the vapor, which you get from, which is, should be the same as the temperature of the water bath. And since you created a little pinhole in here, when you're done, the air pressure sorry, the vapor pressure inside the Dumas tube is going to be the same as air pressure. So you know pressure, you know temperature, and you know mass. Now what we need to get is volume. That's going to be parts two and three.